You're listening to the Rauha, Daily Guidance for Seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani, who will be covering Imam Yusuf al-Nabahani's beautiful collection of 40 sets of 40 hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as well as Imam Zarnuji's guidance for seekers of knowledge regarding the ways of seeking knowledge. Ta'lim al-Mut'allim, Turuq al-Ta'lim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. Allahumma لك الحمد على ما علمت على ما أنعمت علينا من نعم لا تحصى يا رب العالمين فجعلنا اللهم لك من عبادك الشاكرين لنعمك يا رب العالمين الحمد لله In our look at the 40 hadiths the 40 sets of 40 hadiths by Sheikh Yusuf al-Nabahani الحمد لله we completed the second set, which is hadiths on the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadiths indicating the praise of Allah. And praise, hamd, is for blessings. Right? And one of the lessons that we saw from those hadiths is that the you know that what are the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The greatest bless the blessings of Allah in reality are not material matters. Right? You need the, the believers in one level, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, and He tells us, Min whom, that you know amongst you are those who seek this worldly life, and amongst you are those who seek the hereafter. So the believers with worldly concern, what do they see as their blessings? They see, they see as their blessings material things. I got a job, Allah is merciful. I got married, Allah is merciful. This, right, they see the things worthy of praise. Alhamdulillah, what do they say Alhamdulillah for? Alhamdulillah, I had nice Turkish food. Right? But none of that really, and all of these are blessings. But the bl- blessings that matter are the everlasting blessings. Right? And this was the focus of the hadiths that we saw, right? Particularly what Allah has promised the believers in the hereafter. Right? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the believers in the hereafter. And there are numerous lessons in those. And for those of you who are joining in, um, this is this daily roha takes place normally between Mondays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. from Seekers Hub Toronto. And if you look for Daily Roha in iTunes, it, it is also podcast there. So the third collection of 40 hadiths by Sheikh Yusuf and Nabahani. He says, Al Arbaun al Thalitha. Arbaun hadithan fi fadl al Quran al Karimi wa tilawatihi. 40 hadiths in the virtues of the noble Qur'an and in the virtues of reciting it. So the, the author begins with a very brief sending of blessings. He says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Sayyid al Mursaleen. And all blessing and all peace be upon our master Muhammad, the master of all messengers, وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ and upon his folk, وَصَحْبِهِ and his companions, all of them. أَمَّا بَعْدْ To proceed. فَهَذِهِ أَرْبَعُونَ حَدِيثًا فِي فَضْلِ الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ وَتِلَوَتِهِ These are 40 hadiths on the virtues of the noble Qur'an and the virtues of reciting it. The first hadith. An Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu annahu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama khayrukum man ta'allama al-Qur'ana wa allamah arahu al-Bukhari. Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan who's known as the Nurain the possessor of the two the one of the, of two great lights because he was married to one daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when she passed away, to another. 
and the third of the Khulafa, Jami' al Quran, the one who gathered the Quran. Um, he said, and which is why the the Mus'haf that we have, the, the Mus'haf is referred to as Al Mus'haf al Uthmani. Right? Why? Because the f- form, the the final collection of the Mus'haf was done under the direction of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan. The, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best of you, khayrukum, the best, and khayr, the, the one, the most virtuous of you. Man ta'allam al-Qur'an, are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. And the ta'allam al-Qur'an has many levels, but ta'allama has to do with the one who learns the text of the Qur'an and by learning the meanings of the Qur'an. Right? So learning the text of the Qur'an has to do with learning how to, how to read the Qur'an and, how to, and by memorizing the Qur'an. Right? So this hadith contain, contains within it many virtues. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an, which has to do with learning the text of the Qur'an, learning its recitation, and memorizing it. And there's many sub-aspects of that. Learning the text of the Qur'an, and learning the meanings of the Qur'an, which is العلوم الشرعية. Right? Right? The Sharia sciences. And all of them, in every Shari'i science, the, sh- the Sharia sciences, the religious sciences, are, are either established by the Qur'an or they elucidate the meanings of the Qur'an or they detail the implications of the Qur'an or are deduced from the Qur'an or are instruments to understanding the Qur'an, like the ulum al-ala, the sciences of language and, and logic and so on. Right? So khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an, the best of you, the best, most virtuous of you, are those who learn the Qur'an, which has to do with learning the text of the Qur'an, its reading, and, by me- and memorizing it, and the meaning of the Qur'an, which is, and the meaning of the Qur'an, this is a critical error. The meaning of the Qur'an is al ulum al shariya is the Sharia sciences. It is not simply a textual, textualist understanding of the Qur'an. Right? The, 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 the Qur'an is only understood, understood through the Sharia sciences. What is the point of fiqh unless it is a detailing of the divine command? What is the point of hadith except that it is a detailing of the divine command? What is the point of all of spirituality of this, all of them? Right? So one could diagram this very beautifully. Someone wants to break it out. Al-Quran. And understanding the Quran itself which is the tafsir of the Qur'an, tafsir is only through the ulum al right? And the only person who can, someone doing tafsir is doing one of two things. They are either conveying to you the interpretations of those capable of interpreting the Qur'an, or they are themselves capable of interpreting the Qur'an, which requires complete mastery of the Sharia sciences. Anyone else talking about the meanings of the Qur'an, beware. Beware. The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an. And part of learning, of course, the, the, the lazim, right, what is necessarily entailed by learning is acting accordingly. 
وَعَلَّمَهُ and who teach it to others. Who teach it to others. Whether that be teaching the recitation of the Qur'an or teaching people, I mean, mentoring people to memorize the Qur'an or with even more virtue, teaching anything of the Sharia sciences. And there's levels of virtue in the Sharia sciences. And this is related by Imam Bukhari and others. And everyone should, hearing this, should yearn to learn and to convey for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be of khay, you know, the, the, the best of creation are those most beloved to Allah. This is, and this is why al-fadl, عند الله يعني متعلق بالعلم. Virtue with Allah is connected with knowledge. Right? Um, in learning it and in conveying it. Right? And in conveying it. لله تعالى. Um, and every believer should make a commitment to that. To, to properly recite the Quran. And, ta and to properly and to memorize some share of the Qur'an and to commit to learn all that is needed to live the meanings of the Qur'an which you, ne you need to have a, a foundational understanding of ulum ad deen the sciences of the religion right? um, so that and a test do you know what you need to know in your deen that if you read the Qur'an, you, when it talks about inheritance, you know, okay, this is what it's saying. When it talks about the criminal punishments, you know what it's talking about and what it entails. When it's talking about transactions, when it's talking about all the various ahkam, the command of Allah. When it's talking about Allah himself and his prophets, you know what we believe about them. When it's talking about spiritual matters, right, when Allah... Father talks about the akhlaq, right? The inward akhlaq, you know, the spiritual uh, qualities of the heart, or the social qualities of the heart. Whether it's talking about patience, you know, sabr, or gratitude, shukr, or it's talking about the sh the social qualities of the heart, such as generosity, such as good opinion of others, etc. You know. You know the guidance related to it, right? and that's the practical need for the sh Sharia sciences, so that one can live. You know, so one has ilm of the amr of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the command of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Um, and of course, the other key aspect in the in this hadith, taallum in the Arabic language as the commentators of hadith make very clear, ta'allum is what is done by studying under a teacher. That is ta'allum in the Arabic language. Reading has different words in the Arabic language. Right? Mutala'a, nazar, qira'a. Right? Right? But Ta'allum is specific in its core sense to that which is done by a muta'allim under a alim. Right. And that's very clear. And the, that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالْتَعَلُّمْ Knowledge is only through study. The second hadith, عن, عن السيدة عائشة, رضي الله تعالى عنها أم المؤمنين قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فالسيدة عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها relates to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said الذي يقرأ القرآن وهو ماهر به مع السفرة الكرام البررة the one who recites the Quran and they are expert you know, they, they have mastery 
in, rec in its re recitation is with the, the noble, righteous, exalted ones, right? the highest angels. And the mahir, there's an outward mahara, outward expertise or mastery, which is they recite it proficiently, right? يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they recite it as it deserves to be recited. But that, how it deserves to be recited, there's an outward proficiency in it, but there's an inward state of the heart. And the, the, the mahir batinan is the one who recites it, but they behold that they are being addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's kalamullah. So they're being addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? They're in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that even th and their, their lips are moving by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they behold that la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Right? That is inward expertise in reciting it. And they are in with the highest noble virtuous angels. And they are where are they? They're in, the, they're in the divine presence. Okay? Such a person is present in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's an outward, there's an outward expertise, but an inward expertise. وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ And the one who recites the Qur'an. وَهُوَ يَتَتَعْتَعُ فِيهِ And, ye, and يَتَتَعْتَعْ it, 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 it conveys the meaning of the sound. That they struggle with it. Right? right? And they struggle with it. And it is difficult for them. For example, they're a convert, and their language, their mother tongue, has letters that are significantly different from the Arabic language. And many of the, the, the Arabic letters are difficult for them to pronounce, or they struggle with the pronunciation. They're learning it when they're much older, etc. Such a person has twofold reward. Right? The reward of their action and the reward of their effort. Right? But the action, Rahul Bukhari Muslim, this is related by Bukhari and Muslim. So one aspires to be of those who, those who are mahir, who recite it expertly, which is an outward mastery and an inward mastery. Um, and a lot of upcoming hadiths will discuss this inward mastery. But there is also that if one hasn't attained that and one has struggle, the struggle itself is beloved to Allah. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Ghani Nabulsi, in his commentary, um, Al Hadiqatul Nadiya, Sharh uh, al al Muhammadiyah, explaining the work, the, the path of Muhammad by Imam al Birgivi. He explains that the ulama asked the question that how do the angels write down a poor recitation? And then they record it according to the intention and the genuine effort of the servant. But everyone should be, you know, everyone should be working on improving their recitation. And if one's serious about the deen, but and one hasn't reached a level, one hasn't done tasheeh al qira'a, rectifying one's recitation, then one is deficient in deen, right? Naqis wa aql, lacking in intellect, right? Because this is, if this is what Allah and His Messenger have told us, where are we from that, right? And that, and if someone considers himself a student of knowledge and they're not working on their tajweed, then you know, simply shame on them. Um, so we should hasten to rectify that situation. But also there are inward qualities with respect to the Qur'an, the adab of the Qur'an. And that's something that everyone should take very seriously. Anyone serious about al-amal bil-ilm, acting upon their knowledge, should be studying and reviewing the adab of the Qur'an. And two, two of the greatest works on that, number one, is Imam Nawawi's work, translated as Etiquette with the Qur'an, and the second is the chapter on 
the adab with the Quran in Imam Ghazali's Ihya, particularly the, the section on the inward spiritual man, the, the inward adab with the Quran. No one has talked about that as brilliantly as Imam Al Ghazali, uh, Taala, and we've covered that previously on Seekers Hub. So we're going to continue from Hadith number three um, next time, bi idhnillahi Taala, um, and we'll read briefly from Ta'lim al Mutalim on the adab of the seeker of knowledge and this work by Imam Zarnuji looks at what are the qualities of a successful of uh, a seeking of knowledge that is successful that bears fruit um, so we stopped um, um, at the at a summary of the adab related to respecting one's teacher right so he says wa fil jumla right so this is this is in chapter uh, the chapter on respecting knowledge and its people right wa fil jumla yat and in summary, one seeks to please them and one avoids displeasing them. And this is, of course, the, the kind of teacher who's fit to follow. Right? As, and why is that? Because the true teacher wants what's good for you in your relationship with Allah. They want what's good for you in you fulfilling your ultimate potential with Allah. Which is why? Um, Imam uh, Sidi Al-Ghawth Abu Madian in his Qasida Unwan Al-Tawfiq what he said Fi ridahu rida al-bari wa ta'atuhu in their good pleasure in the good pleasure of one's teacher one's mentor right, is in their good pleasure is the good pleasure of Allah because the true teacher they're not telling you things for their sake they're you know and particularly with respect to your learning and your you know, and what and the counsel they give you you know, well, the a key quality of the true teacher the true mentoring teacher is that they have nasiha talabul khair fi haqqil ghair they see good with respect to you right so and they say laysa sha'nu an taftakhira bi shaykhik right what it balishanu and yaftakhir bik right that what it doesn't matter whether you're proud of your teacher but rather whether your teacher is proud of you right wa yumathilu amrahu fi ghayri ma'siyati Allah ta'ala and one obeys their command in other than the disobedience of Allah most high فَإِنَّهُ لَا طَاعَةَ لِمَخْلُوقٍ فِي مَعْصِيَةِ الْخَالِقِ For there is no obedience to creation in disobedience to the Creator. Right? So, listening to one's teacher is a condition for benefit, but it's a means to seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? It's not an end in itself. كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ إِنَّ شَرَّ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُذْهِبُ دِينَهُ لِدُنْيَا غَيْرِهِ that the, It's related from the Prophet وسلم, that fr- from the worst of people are those who rid themselves of their deen for someone else's worldly gain. And one should be careful because everyone, like our following is a principled following. A sound following of scholars is, su- is a principled following. That if they err, one would not err. Right? If they do something wrong, unprincipled, one would not follow them in that error. Now, everyone can err sometimes. Right? That's a given. لَا يُنَافِي إِثْبَاتَ الْخُصُصِيَّةِ ظُهُورُ أَوْصَافِ الْبَشَرِيَّةِ It does not negate the affirmation of electhood, of high rank with Allah, for 
the, the, the traits of humanness to be manifest. Right? But if, if it becomes a norm and it is not something that the person disassociates themselves with, they made a mistake, they go back on it, they repent, they re redress, they rectify, then that's very dangerous. Okay? And then he says, وَمِن تَوْقِيرِهِ تَوْقِيرُ أَوْلَادِهِ وَمَنْ يَتَعَلَّقُ بِهِ And from the respect of one's teacher is to respect their children and those associated with them. وَكَانَ أُسْتَاذُنَا الشَّيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بُرْهَانُ الدِّينِ صَاحِبُ الْهِدَاةِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَحْكِي أَنَّ وَاحِدًا مِنْ كِبَارِ أَيْمَةِ بُخَارَ كَانَ يَجْلِسُ مَجْلِسَ الدَّرْسِ وَكَانَ يَقُومُ فِي خِلَالِ الدَّرْسِ أَحْيَانًا فَسَأَلُوهُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ said and it, the author of the Hidayah our teacher Sheikh al-Islam Burhan al-Din meaning al-Marghinani used to tell us that one of the great scholars one of the great imams one of the great scholars of Bukhara used to sit in the, the place of teaching his lesson. And once in a while, during the lesson, he'd get up. So they asked him regarding that. And this lesson was probably in the masjid or in a public place. فَسَأَلُوهُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ فَقَالَ إِنَّ أَبْنَ أُسْتَاذِي يَلْعَبُ مَعَ الصِّبْيَانِ فِي سِكَّةٍ وَيَجِئُوا أَحْيَانًا إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ Said that the, the, the son of one of my teachers plays with the children in one of the streets and sometimes he comes to the door of the masjid. فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُهُ أَقُومُ لَهُ تَعْظِيمًا لِأُسْتَاذِي says, and if I see them, I stand up out of respect to my teacher. وَكَانَ ال... and that's one story. وَكَانَ الْقَاضِي الْإِمَامِ فَخْرُ الدِّينِ الْأَسْتَرَى بَنْدِي رَئِيسُ الْأَئِمَّةِ فِي مَرُوْ وَكَانَ السُلْطَانُ يَحْتَرِمُهُ غَايَةَ الْإِحْتِرَامِ ويقول إنما وجدت في هذا المنصب بخدمة الأستاذ. Right. So another of the great scholars, the Qadi, the Imam Fakhr Din Al Astrabadi, Astrabandi, who was the the foremost Imam, the foremost lead scholar of the great region of Maru, and the, even the Sultan there. The ruler used to respect him to the utmost of respect. He used to say, we have only reached this rank by serving you know, my teacher. فَإِنِّي كُنْتُ أَخْدِمُ الْأُسْتَاذَ الْقَاضِيَ الْإِمَامَ أَبَى يَزِيدٍ الدَّبُوسِ وَكُنْتُ أَخْدُمُهُ وَأَطْبَخُ طَعَامُهُ ثَلَاثِينَ سَنَةً He says, I used to serve the great teacher, the Qadi, the Imam, Abu, Abu Yazid al-Dabusi, or al-Dabusi, and I served him and cooked for him his food for 30 years. وَلَا أَكُلُ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا Would not eat anything. Imam al-Dabusi was one of the great Hanafi Usulis and wrote some brilliant works, both in Usul and in the, uh, he has an amazing work called Ta'sisu al-Nadhar, where he looks at the underlying principles in which Imam Abu Hanifa and his companions differed that resulted in their differences in the details of fiqh in different issues. It's an amazing, very subtle book. I have yet to see an edition that the editors understood what he was talking about because they're all riddled with errors. So they re it reads like a puzzle. It's a good deciphering practice. We'll look at one more story. وَكَانَ الشَّيْخُ الْإِمَامُ الْأَجَلْ شَمْسُ الْأَيْمَّ الْحَلْوَانِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قَدْ خَرَجَ مِنْ بُخَارَ وَسَكَنَ فِي بَعْضِ الْقُرَى أَيَّامًا لِحَادِثَةٍ وَقَعَتْ لَهُ وَقَدْ زَارَهُ تِلْمِيذُهُ غَيْرَ الشَّيْخِ الْإِمَامِ وَقَدْ زَارَهُ تَلَمِيذُهُ غَيْرَ الشَّيْخِ الْإِمَامِ الْقَاضِي شَمْسُ الْأَيْمَّ Al-Zarnuji, Rahimah Al-Zarnuji, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So, and it's related um, regarding the great Imam, Shamsul Al-Imma, literally the son of scholars, 
Al-Halwani, and Al-Halwani is one of the great, great Imams of the Hanafi school, that he'd left Bukhara and was living in one of the small towns, in one of the villages, literally, um, for, for, for a period of time because of some events that happened to him. Because the scholars would get prominent, but then the, the authorities would get very sensitive about them. They've all, the, the ulama, or, you know, so things would happen. So he was living in one of the, the, the small towns or villages. And all his students visited him, except for the, the, the great Imam, the Qadi, Shamsul Aimma, Azarnuji, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. فَقَالَ لَهُ حِينَ لَقِيَهُ لِمَا لَمْ, أزر, لم تَزُرْنِي so when he finally came, he asked him, why didn't you visit me? And of course, this is going back to an issue that we totally neglect. It's not just between a teacher and a student, but it's a broader thing that a ziyara lillahi ta'ala, a tazawur lillahi ta'ala min akad sunan al Visiting one another for the sake of Allah is one of the most important of the social sunnas. Right? And it's a bid'ah. And I say it unhesitating. It's a bid'ah for people not to take the days of Eid off. At least the first day. Going back to work. When If you have one vacation day, take one of the Eids off. If you have two vacation days, take two days of Eid off. Right? Work through Ramadan. But the two days of Eid are days of festivity. Right? And it's a fundamental bid'ah not to do so. Right? And failing to make arrangements for that, is just neglect in deen. And it is religious neglect. Uh, we are commanded to celebrate, to visit one another, etc. And this is a fundamental uh, shortcoming right, of visiting, you know, family first, right? But, you know, in, in places like Damascus or Tarim or other cities, or just an established Baghdad, I heard this from Sheikh Afif al Din al Jailani, just a given. Second day of Eid, it's haqqul ulama. The, the first day of Eid is the right of family. Second day of Eid is the right, if you're religious, of the ulama. That you visit them. Right? That you visit them. Um, and this is well established. Right? Uh, this is well established. And, uh, Sheikh Afif al-Din al-Jailani mentioned that one year, because Sheikh Afif al-Din al-Jailani is a di direct descendant of Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jailani. And so they, they take care of the masjid, and the, and the maqam of, of Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani in Baghdad. And one year, with all the d disturbance going on and so on, on the second day of Eid, he was not able to visit his teacher, Sheikh Abdul Karim Mudarris. And then, third day, he was busy and he had a dream that night that of the Prophet. And I heard this straight from Sheikh, Afi, uh, Sheikh Afif al Din al Jilani. He asked him, Oh, Afif, oh, Afif al Din, how come you haven't visited your teacher, Sheikh Abdul Karim? And he woke up and he went to visit his teacher. And Sheikh Abdul Karim, al Mudarris, when he came, he, he asked him, Sayyid Afif al Din, you didn't visit me during Eid. And he apologized, said, But I have a good story, I have a bushra to share with you. I said, what is it? He said, uh, I saw the Prophet ﷺ and he asked me why I didn't visit you. So I, I apologized. And so Sheikh Afif al Din said, you really saw that? He said, yes. He said, let's celebrate. And he said, let's make tea and have kak, which is the, the dry biscuit. Because that's all Sheikh Abdul Karim Mudarris had. Sheikh Abdul Karim Mudarris lived to around 103 or 104, maybe 105 years of age. And he was... He was teaching full time, dedicated for over for ninety years, right, from when he was in his early teens. That's why he's known as Al Mudarris. He had nothing; he just lived in a small room by the masjid, and was till his death he was actively teaching. Great, great Imam died about ten years ago. Um, so Al Halwani asked this question: "Lima lam tazurni? How come you didn't visit me?" فقال له. So his student, the student of Al Halwani, um, Al Zarnuji, فقال له كنت مشغولا بخدمة الوالدة. I was busy serving my mother. فقال 
ترزق العمر ولا ترزق رونق الدرس said you'll be you'll be granted long life but you will not be granted radiance in your in your teaching because and this is based on the hadith of the prophet sallallahu that whoever maintains ties of family is blessed in their life either by long life or by barakah in their time or their wealth but they're blessed in their life right that, that silat al-rahim lengthens one's life either lengthens its amount or lengthen or expands its blessing or the expands the blessings within it but you will not be granted the ronaq which is used in urdu the ronaq it's from this may actually be from farsi uh, the radiance the, the you know the benefit of of your teaching and and that's how it was فانه كان يسكن في اكثر اوقاته القرى ولم ينتظم له الدرس and this this great otherwise great scholar lived most of his life in small towns and he was never able to get his teaching going فمن تاذى منه استاذه يحرم بركه العلم whoever's teacher is annoyed by them is debarred yuhram is debarred from the blessing of knowledge na'udhu billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala min dhalik wa lam yantafi' bihi illa wa lam yuntafa' bihi illa qalilan and one and others or either they don't benefit by their knowledge except a little or others don't benefit from their knowledge except a little and this is mujarrab it begins of course the first step is respect your own teacher or respect your own teachers and second respect the people of knowledge respect the people of knowledge right? um, and then um, we'll close with these lines of poetry said in the muallima wa tabiba kilahuma لا ينصحان إذ هما لم يكرما فاصبر لدائك إن جفوت طبيبه واقنع بجهلك إن جفوت معلما right? He says the teacher and the doctor both of them don't give complete counsel if they are not respected So be patient with your ailment, if you are bad to your doctor, and be content with your ignorance, if you're bad to your teacher. Okay? Of course, what it means is that you know, if you're disrespectful to your doctor, whatever your doctor tells you, you're like, well, I disagree. What? You know, your doctor is not really going to tell you what you need to know. They say, well, you know, so why should I tell you? Okay? Okay? It's not that, I mean, the doctor will do their job, but will they go... Above and beyond to help you? No. Right? And this, of course, especially based on a model of where you had much closer, much more holistic relationship with your doctor. Right? And that's the basis with one's teacher. So be content with your sickness if you are r rude to your doctor. And be content and suffice yourself with your ignorance if you are, if you wrong your teacher. Because most of the benefit of the teacher-student relationship is not in the class, but by their counsel and by their guidance and by observing them and by acquiring the attitude to knowledge and the tools, right? and the application of the tools of knowledge that the teacher has. But that's only through establishing a genuine relationship of closeness. And it's not saying that you know, cook and clean for your teacher, and that's it. Right? But you know, it's one of the things that to acquire closeness to the teacher by being worthy of that. Right? And that, that's, a, that's an art. And then we'll continue 
tomorrow or on Monday by looking at the story of Harun al-Rashid when he sent his son to one of the great scholars of the Arabic language, al-Asma'i. Um, Thank you for listening to the Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani. Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.